Hey there, um, have you ever sat in an automation or an SDET interview and thought, well, I know Selenium, but what if they throw me a, a curveball from a real-time project? Well, you are exactly why I made this series. After years of helping testers prepare for interview and creating content on different tools uh, like Selenium or Tosca, I realized the same tricky uh, high impact scenario based interview questions keep coming up. Not textbook questions, but real situations from production systems. So uh, I thought I will build uh, this advanced Selenium interview scenario series where each episode will tackle one of these make or break changes. You will learn exactly um, how to solve them and then also how to explain uh, your approach to the interviewers so that you stand out in the room. Coming to today's challenge, uh, we are going to handle uh, infinite scroll with dynamic content and uh, we'll also handle a cookie consent pop-up. By the end of this episode, you'll be able to code it and explain your approach in an interview. So let's have a look um, at this real scenario, which uh, I was talking about. And uh, this page is called the unsplash.com. And it has got a lot of different uh, pictures and videos, as you can see here, right? Um, and when you go into the scroll bar, and I scroll down, down, and then you will see uh, that the page keeps on loading, right? So this images, they don't stop until all the images are shown, right? So it's like an infinite scroll, uh, which keeps on going. And now you need to scroll till the bottom until you reach the end of this page and uh, all the images are loaded. This is what you have to solve using Selenium. And then we have to also handle this pop-up window where uh, I need to click on this accept all cookies. So before I scroll uh, into the window, I need to click on the accept all cookies. And then I need to keep on scrolling um, based on whatever content this is loading. And then I need to apply a logic where it should stop scrolling once all the content is loaded. So um, let's jump into a solution and break it down uh, step by step. And then let's see how we can develop the script using Selenium and Java. So let's jump uh, into our ID. Uh, I'm using Intel JIDA, but you are free to use any particular ID. So I have uh, already created a project structure and I've got a class here uh, to develop our script, right? Uh, it has got a static void main method, uh, which will be used to execute this particular uh, test script. And then um, we have got the Chrome driver uh, initialization here. So it creates a Chrome driver and then I'm using the latest version of Selenium WebDriver, so you don't need to manage um, any versions of the Chrome driver. And then um, we are navigating to that particular website, which is unsplash.com. And then we have a basic uh, timeout just to uh, allow the page to load. And then uh, we have got two lines here, uh, basically to initialize the JavaScript executor because we are going to use it. And then uh, we are casting the driver to run this JavaScript. And then we have got uh, explicit wait. Um, this will be used to wait for a particular element. So we have put uh, the duration as 10 seconds here, right? And then uh, at the last, uh, we will be closing all the driver sessions. So this is uh, the basic structure, which is already present here. Now we need to write our main logic, uh, which is to do the infinite scrolling and also handle the cookie pop-up. So let's start uh, with the logic for the infinite scrolling. So here, uh, the first step uh, is to set the counters for stopping condition. Now here, uh, we'll be using two counters. One is called the same count counter. Uh, it basically tracks the consecutive times no new images appear. And then we have got the max retries. Uh, it is the max allowed consecutive uh, times uh, when uh, we go through the cycle and uh, we see if the images are loading or not, right? So we'll understand this when we look into the actual logic, but now we'll just create the two counters. Now here I have initialized the first counter as zero. 
uh, it will always start from zero and then it will increment. And then the max retries I want to do before I stop this particular scrolling is three. Uh, you can keep it one, two, um, or based on your requirements. Now, the next uh, step is to uh, go into the main infinite scroll loop. So here uh, we'll be using a while loop um, and it will continue until uh, it reaches a particular condition. Inside that while loop, uh, we'll count the number of uh, currently loaded images on the page and we'll use a particular property of the element in order to find all the images on the page. We'll also store uh, the number of images which are loaded uh, into a counter and then we'll use the JavaScript to scroll uh, to the bottom of the page. So let's do all of this. So let's see what we have done until now. Um, so we have put a condition where uh, the counter will check whether it is less than the max retries. Once uh, it is over this max retries value, then it will exit this while loop. Then we are counting the number of currently loaded images on the page. So here we are using a list of a web element. Uh, it will store the number of images uh, which are there on the page. It will use the find elements method and inside this will pass a X path, which will grab all the images on the page. Then uh, we are storing the number of images. So we are using uh, the size method of the list class in order to get this current count. And then uh, we are scrolling down to the bottom of the page to trigger the lazy load. So here we are using the execute script, uh, which is a method in the JavaScript executor. And uh, we are passing a script here, which is to scroll uh, the window from top to, uh, it will use the height of uh, the document.body or which is the HTML page. So it will scroll to the bottom of the page. Now, the next step is to find this XPath expression, which can get us all the images on the page. So let's do that. So here uh, on the page, let's try to find out what could be the XPath expression. So I'm going to inspect one of the images here. And here we'll try to find out um, the common property which could uh, get us all the images, right? So uh, we cannot use the alt uh, because it will be different for each image. We cannot use the data test ID or the class. Uh, it could be unstable or uh, inconsistent. So what we are going to use is this uh, particular property which is called the item prop, okay? So this uh, we will use to get all the images. Now, just to make sure that it is common for all the different images, I'm going to inspect another element. And here also you will see that item prop is equals to thumbnail URL. We'll also build this XPath here and test it. So uh, we will open this search window and here I'm going to write my XPath. So here uh, it will be a uh, image. And inside this, we will use uh, at item prop equals to uh, thumbnail URL. And then uh, we will enter this uh, in order to see how many elements it is returning. You can see there are 24 elements currently, but it will uh, keep on increasing. It is getting all the images which has got this particular property. So we can use this XPath expression. Uh, we have tested it, it works. So I'm going to paste it here. So that completes our um, script to get the count of currently loaded images on the page, right? Now the next step uh, is to wait until the number of images is greater than uh, when we started this particular scroll, right? So we have to put it in a condition and then um, we have to use explicit wait inside our try catch block. So let's do that. Okay, now let's try and understand what uh, we are doing here. So after the JavaScript executor, um, it scrolls to the bottom. 
So here we have got a try catch block. Here we are waiting until the number of images is greater than before the scroll. Uh, inside this, we are using um, the explicit wait with the expected conditions. Inside this, we are using a method which is called the number of elements to be more than. It accepts two parameters um, and then it will accept a element locator and then the integer number, okay? So using this, uh, it can wait for uh, a certain amount of time which is defined until um, the number of elements is more than what you have defined in that parameter. So here we are passing um, the element itself, okay, using the XPath expression. And then we are also passing the current count here, which we have got earlier. So it will wait until that time. It will reset the counter here uh, if new images are loaded. Uh, if not, it will go into the catch block. If the time uh, expires, then uh, the timeout exception will occur and then uh, it will come here. It, it will increase the counter and then um, we'll also do some print statements just to keep or log our progress, right? So once it comes out of this while loop, then uh, we'll say that scrolling is completed and then we will close all the driver sessions. I have also put um, a print message to see uh, how many images are getting loaded. So this is the complete script uh, and the logic which will be used to do the infinite scrolling. And then uh, we also have a stopping logic where uh, it should come out of the loop once all the images are loaded. Now the next part uh, is to handle the accept cookies button, right? And ideally we should do it before we get into this scrolling, right? So uh, what we'll do is once we have cast the driver uh, before we set the counters, uh, we can put the logic here uh, to handle the cookies. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so let's try and understand what we're doing here. Uh, we are using a try catch block here so that any exception occurs, uh, it is able to handle that gracefully. Uh, we are creating a web element here uh, called the accept cookie button. Uh, we will soon get the export to identify this. And then uh, we are again using an explicit wait uh, to wait until that element becomes clickable. So we are using the element to be clickable method here. We are passing the web element here uh, which we found earlier, and then we are performing the click operation. So it will accept uh, the cookies, right? Uh, we are also printing that. And then in the catch block, we are using the timeout exception uh, to gracefully continue if there is any timeout exception, okay? So now the only part left is to get um, the X path for this. So let's go ahead and do that. So here uh, you can see this is uh, the accept all cookies. Uh, so we are going to click on this. So I'm going to inspect this. Um, and here you can see, I can find this by text. Uh, it's a button. So I will use that. Uh, I'll quickly build the X path here. Okay, and uh, once you do that, you will see that uh, it is uniquely identified using this. So we can use this as an X path. And we'll go back here. And uh, we'll put this into this particular uh, XPath expression. So that completes our uh, full script, which can handle both the cookie dialog and the infinite scroll uh, in that particular uh, page. Uh, so in terms of best practices, uh, we are using the relative XPath. So there is no static XPath and it should be stable uh, in the future runs as well, uh, unless uh, this particular text changes. So uh, if that happens, we can even use much better XPath expressions. So now that we have built our script, let's do a dry run and let's make sure that this is executable and it is giving us the expected results. So I'm going to execute this now. So as you can see, uh, it has started the infinite scrolling after it took care of the accept all cookies. Um, so it will keep on scrolling uh, until it reaches to the bottom and it has scrolled all the images. 
and then uh, once it retries three times it will come out of this loop and stop the scrolling so i will allow this to run and then we'll see um, what's the final result so uh, our script has now completed and uh, it has closed all the browser sessions and uh, we can check uh, in the console that uh, it has continuously loaded the images right uh, you can see here uh, it is showing up the total number of images loaded uh, and once uh, it and once it uh, reaches the bottom uh, of the page where there are no new images being detected in the specified amount of time then uh, it says uh, it is retrying so it will retry three times and then uh, it will come out of the loop. So uh, it is when the scrolling will be completed. Now, uh, during the interview, if uh, the interviewer asks that this is going to take a long time uh, because there are lots of images. So is there any way we can cut down to the number of images, right? So that you can do again very easily. So what you can do is uh, you can change the condition. So instead of uh, using this counter to try until the max retries uh, is this three, uh, instead of that, what you can do is you can initialize the current count counter, and then uh, you can check uh, if the current count of the images uh, is up to a particular number, then you just stop, right? So if you say um, the current count is less than 200 um, or it is less than equals to 200, then just stop or come out of the loop. So this can be easily customized um, to the needs of uh, that particular question or your scenario uh, which you are trying to solve. So there you have it, um, a clean uh, interview ready approach uh, to perform the infinite scrolling uh, through uh, Selenium and automation. And you can also handle uh, the cookie dialogue uh, in your website. So now uh, you can easily execute the code and also you can walk through uh, an interviewer through your logic uh, with absolute confidence. Now, uh, if you are serious about leveling up um, as a QA or a SDET, then I would highly recommend you to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications uh, because we are going to tackle a lot more problems in the coming up episodes. Also, uh, drop your uh, toughest Selenium scenario in the comments uh, and it might be our next challenge.